further ado, now commence the next session. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon everybody, welcome to the NTA stand. We're talking to you today about assessing student progress quickly and easily with Microsoft um, Education, specifically looking at Microsoft Forms within Teams and assignments within Teams as well. So just before I talk you through that, I'm going to give you a quick um, update on some of the Microsoft uh, features that have been launched here this week at BEP. So up here you can see you've got the grain sync, that is where you are able to not only pull your data from something like Sims, you can use this then to push the data back into that sort of platform. So that's a really cool feature that's just been launched. The new assignments experience, we'll have a look at this in a little bit, um, a little bit later on. And that basically is just more streamlined, less clicks, saving teachers time. On the top corner over there, we've got Turn It In Integration. This is a fantastic feature. It allows pupils, when they submit their work, for you to kind of see where they got that information from, and it sort of has a look at the authenticity of that work, whether or not they've plagiarised or copied and pasted anything from the internet. And you're able to see that straight away. It will generate a report and show the similarity. And then down the bottom, we've got Make More Assignments, which I'm pretty sure you've probably seen a little bit of today already. If not, there's a couple more sessions here on the MTA. So we're going to have a look first and foremost at assessing progress with Microsoft Forms. So please could you just go onto your devices and have a look at the Teams app at the bottom. If you just launch that for me. So looking at Microsoft Forms and assignments in Teams, it's integral within the Teams experience, so it's within the same platform. The ability to set a quiz as an assignment, it can have a variety of question types. Ability to share across a range of devices. This is fantastic for our people and students as they're always on the go. If it's device agnostic, you can access it from anything. Real time view of responses, and you can easily provide feedback to the students. So you should all be on Teams, you should be able to see that. So we're going to go straight into there as the teacher, and you need to be in algebra at second period. That is what we're focusing on today. So you're in that class, algebra at second period. In here, as you can see on the side, you can see the different classes. You can also see the activity icon up here, which generates a feed. So quickly and easily, you can see any notifications that come through. The students can see that as well. So back in the team, in algebra second period, we have the conversations feature. So this is the first thing that I want to draw your attention to. A really, really simple tool for you to be able to speak to everybody in your class. So as you can see there, Paul is tagging you all in it, so you will all get a notification, and he's asking you what is your favourite holiday destination. So please write back to him, please let us know what your favourite holiday destination is. And you can see quite quickly and easily how simple it is to ask the class a question and for them to respond to you in a really simple way. If you want to follow that up with any follow-up questions or asking them why or how, you can quite easily do that. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to reply to me. And then as you can see, you can also tag individual students within there. So say for example, you ask the class a question, a couple of students maybe don't respond, you can tag them straight away and say, what is your favourite holiday destination? How are you getting on with that topic? Yes. <laughs> Okay, and then as you can see, Paul's just followed it up, tagged the people, asked why. Okay, and I think that was Cuba, was it? Okay, so we're going to now have a look at the assignments feature, where we're going to have a look at Microsoft Forms, and specifically using the quiz um, elements of that. So here you can see the assignments, a really, really simple, streamlined way of looking at it. You can see at the top here at the ellipses, you can have a look at showing some drafts, and you can show anything that has been graded. So the pupils have got a really easy way of tracking and monitoring the progress that they are making within your lessons. We also have a filter here, and these are the two categories that we've automatically already generated, and we'll talk you how to create those categories a little bit later on. So we're going to create an assignment down the bottom here, and we're going to create a quiz. But before we attach the quiz, we're going to go straight into Microsoft Forms, so this is a maths quiz that we've already pre-populated 
And as you can see down here, if we just scroll down, you will see all the different types of questions. So there's algebra, division, multiplication. And I'm just going to show you how you add a question. So you simply click on it, add a question. And as you can see, based on the style of the question above, it automatically generates those questions for you. It really it completely saves time. The maths department at Rimmelsdale, where we're from, absolutely love this feature. You can create a quiz within Teams in a matter of minutes to assess different elements of math. So we're going to select a couple of those and select it. Now, to be able to share this form, if you use Microsoft Teams, Anybody in here use forms already? Anybody use it for assessment purposes? Yeah, look So if you want to share this, you can share it in Microsoft Teams already, or you can just share it through a link. You simply just copy the link, the QR code, and you can send that out. Okay, so not only can you have to use this for assessments within schools, we also use it for parental surveys. We send the links out in order to gather that feedback from other people in the organisation and outside as well. So we're going to go back into Teams, into assignments, we're going to add the quiz. You can also create a new form once you've done this as well. You don't have to pre-populate them, you can just do it straight away. We're going to click Friday 2, Maths Review Questions, next. And as you can see, it brings up this page here. So assign to, we're going to assign to all you guys. All students, I'd like you all to have a go at the Maths Questions. The title will leave us that, and then here's the category. So we've already pre-populated two of them, but you can add a new one at the bottom. Really, really quick and easy, but we're going to go with topic one and two. You can add some instructions in there. Please complete quiz. Or just complete. And as you can see, at the bottom, the resource has already attached itself, so the form itself is already there. At the top, you've got a due date, a calendar. Select which day you want that to be due in the time. You can schedule to assign it later. So say, for example, at the weekend, you were getting something prepared, you could have that to the sign Monday night, the following week. You can do that quite quickly and easily there. So we'll leave that off for now. And then you simply just assign. Okay, so all you guys should get a notification in your Teams if you just want to refresh the page. That will come through, and I would like you to have a go at doing some of the maths questions. So we're going to flip to the student view. So you'll get a notification in the top left hand corner in your activity tab to tell you that you have been set an assignment and it will also appear in your conversations and your assignments as well. So once you've got that, you want to just test out your math skills while we're here. As you can see down the bottom, you've got a notification to say you have been set an assignment. It comes at the bottom. Simply click that and you can go into it. Once you open up the assignments, this is what it looks like for the student. They know exactly how many points they need to get, the instructions are there, when it's due, and what they need to do. So you simply click on the link and it opens within Teams as well. So Microsoft Forms is opening within Teams and not having to bounce out to anywhere else. Really, really quick and simple. So Paul's going to have a look at these math questions. Hopefully you'll do better than I did earlier. So I'll just give you 30 seconds or so to have a go at that. Okay, whilst well, you're finishing that off, as you can see up here, um, as you submitted the marks, it says thank you, your response has been submitted. You can, as a student, you can review your results straight away. There's no waiting, see what you've done right or wrong. A really, really simple, easy tool to use maybe at the start of a lesson for you to be able to have a look at what that people needs to work on. As you scroll down, you can see clearly which ones you got wrong and which ones that you got right. So we're going to go back into the teacher. Okay, so two of us have turned it in. Okay, so here you can see, they have a list of all the people in your class, you'll see exactly which ones have turned in. So Marsha has turned it in. Thank you, Marsha. So 
on here, this is what it would look like for the teacher. So you can quickly and easily switch between the pupils up here with these arrows. And at the top, you can give some feedback overall. So on the, the quiz overall, on the topic overall. So good effort, Marsha. And then as you scroll down, you can see exactly which questions that people got right or wrong, and you can give individual feedback, so we spoke feedback to that particular topic on the right hand side in the speech to do some more revision on this topic. Okay, once you've done that, you would just simply scroll to the top, click on the ellipses, and close to scores. Straight away, those scores would go straight back to the people. And they would be able to see exactly the form itself, which questions they got right or wrong, and the feedback overall and for each individual question that you have done that feedback for. So that's assignment within Microsoft Forms, within Teams. We're now going to have a look at um, the rubric assignments within Teams. So assessing progress with rubrics. So this is a really, really cool feature that's just been launched uh, this week at BET with Microsoft Teams. So a great thing about it is it's sharing the success criteria with the students, okay? So share it with the students straight away, you, they can see exactly what they need to achieve in that particular assignment and what they need to do to achieve that criteria. You can assess against the criteria set so a pupil knows exactly what they need to be doing in order to achieve a certain band or a grade. Change points associated with each aspect, you can customise those points and you can customise the weightings within that rubric. Easy to provide feedback, you can do it alongside the document and you can reuse rubrics time after time, which saves so much time. Once you've generated this rubric, you don't have to do it again, you simply just attach it and I will show you how to do that. So we'll go back into Teams as the teacher. We'll go to Assignments. And we will look at creating a new assignment. Now the ironic thing is we're going to set you an English assignment in your Algebra Maths class. Um, just so you can have a look at how you would formulate a piece of rubric. So you would go to create assignment. Okay, so just to talk you through the way that this looks, again, you would assign to algebra second period, so that's you guys, I want you all to get it again. To all students, you'd simply give them a title, so in this case, poetry analysis. You can add a category, so like I said, you can create a new one, but we're going to go with poetry anthology. Give them some instructions. resources. So this is a really, really quick and easy tool to be able to provide some support, differentiate those assignments within here. So we're going to just select a link from a YouTube clip that will help with the analysis of this particular poem. You simply just copy and paste the link in and the text that you would like to display. Okay, and you simply just attach it and it shows up here. In the top corner, over here, you've got your due date just like you had before. You can schedule to assign late to the same as before. You can also have late hand in allowed. So, for example, if you still wanted a pupil to submit it even if it was late, then you can have that selected. Points, you can assign points um, if you wish. We all know pupils tend to like just looking at the numbers. And how many points have I got out of 100? Have I done enough? So you can have that on or off. And then the really cool feature, the new um, feature of Teams that I've told you about before is the turn it in. So we're going to turn that on and see if Evan has plagiarised. And then here we come to the rubric. So if you click add rubric, you can see we've already created one here. This is a rubric taken from the GCFC criteria and it was simply just copy and pasted into the rubric. It took me a matter of minutes to be able to do that. There were no highlighting on different pages, pens everywhere, nothing like that. You just select the rubric that you want to add and you simply scroll down and you can see the different 
areas that need to be awarded or assessed against. So you can have the different assessment objectives, you can go along and it, you can have as many of these as you like. It's not restricted, you can keep adding and adding and adding. Once you've done that, you just attach. And then you simply just assign the assignment to the class. Now in a matter of minutes, I'm not expecting you to sit there and complete a full um, poetic analysis right now. Um, so we're going to flick to the students so you can have a look at one that we've already put together for you. Okay, so while that's just loading, once the student gets this information through, it's really quick and easy for them to be able to see exactly what they need to be doing. So there's no, oh, this is what I need to put in now, so how do I do this? Straight away, they can see the rubric, they know exactly what needs to be done. So this is kind of what um, they'll have, okay, uh, the type of the assignment, the tag, you get the instructions, what we'd like them to do. You've got the reference materials here so they can have easy access to the YouTube clip and the work is down here. They can easily see the rubric, they can click on that and they can see exactly how many points, what band, what criteria they need to be able to achieve. Really, really simple and easy. So they simply just upload the work. Once the work's uploaded, you'll see down this bottom corner it says turn it in report pending. So that's where turn it in is having a look at the authenticity of that document, whether or not Lit 11 has copied and pasted it all from Wikipedia. Okay, so once we open the document as a teacher and we want to have a look at all um, the things that Evan has written, you can see, sorry, you can see down the side of the document in just, in just a second that there's little speech bubbles. Those speech bubbles are specific comments that have been given to that pupil about that certain sentence or paragraph and you simply just highlight, click new comment and you are able to comment on that, that area which is key to a pupil. It's all fine and well putting strength on a target at the end, but sometimes they don't particularly know whereabouts that links to. But with this, you have all the features in here that you would have um, in Word. So as you can see, you can just highlight it, click the new comment, you can give some praise, you can give a target. So expand on this, please. And then you simply just send it, and when Evan comes to have a look at his work, and he wants to improve it, he can see that the summer that's the way we would like Evan to improve on that particular, that particular point. <clears throat> on the other side, once we've given Evan the feedback on Word Online, so we've perhaps commented on certain, certain areas, we can then select the rubric. We can give him some feedback, um, generic feedback or as an overall. Once we select the rubrics, it's really quick and easy to be able to assess this assignment. So as you can see at the top, we're going to stick with AO1, the understanding category. We'll see what bands we've got for that. For AO2, we're going to give him band 4. Oh, no, we're, not. we're going to give him band 5, it's improved. <laughs> and then we're going to go to AO3, context. And I think we could probably give him band 5 as well. He's definitely been working hard today. Okay, once you've done that, you just click done at the top. And already it's tallied up the points that it does it automatically. So Evan will know how many points out of 100 that he's achieved. We've given him some feedback. He's got 84 out of 100. And we simply just return the assignment straight back to him. So when Evan gets that back, so when your students get your, their assignments back, it's still featured in the assignment section. So it's still in order. They know exactly what was submitted and where all the due dates are on there. And when he goes into that assignment, he can see exactly the questions that have been asked by the teacher. He can respond directly to them. And he can also have a look at the learning tools immersive reader that is still utilised even within Teams. So there's other sessions going on about immersive reader, but I just wanted to highlight that to you as well. Okay, so as well as using the feedback within Teams, assignments within Teams, the quiz, the maths function, I know I appreciate this quite a lot to take in. It's just a little bit of a different forms of feedback that we particularly use here um, at Ribblestone. So for example, you have written feedback. We also have verbal feedback. This has been a massive game changer 
from a lot of teachers within our within our school. For example, our humanities teacher, ordinarily she was taking an hour and a half to mark a class set of, of books, of coursework responses, doing verbal feedback, she managed to do it in 36 minutes. So she saved her so much time, really, really quick and easy, and the students absolutely loved listening to the feedback. It was like you were having that conversation. You need to advise them to bring headphones, otherwise you'll listen to 30 of your voices over and over again. Uh, so you need to make sure they bring those in. You've got your stickers on one note, really, really quick and easy. And we've also got Flipgrid. If you want to know any more about Flipgrid, we've got the guys on the Flipgrid stand over there. A really simple tool for formative assessments, really quick for AFL. And ultimately, we're saving teachers time. There's just a couple more sessions if you wanted to learn any more. You can have a look at these links here. We've also got the brochures. Uh, some of you have got these on your tables already. And on the back page, there's just some key information, some QR codes on here that can direct you to certain areas for any extra help. So I appreciate you probably had a long day walking around this amazing place, having a look at all these new ideas. But here's just a couple of next steps that we'd like you to take away from this session. We'd like you to set up and share a Microsoft form quiz with one of your classes. Just give it a go. If you want to try the maths functionality as well, absolutely fantastic. Use a rubric within assignments to share criteria and assess the progress effectively and be able to provide that personalised feedback. And also sign up to the Microsoft Educator Community. There are reams and reams of free resources on there to help you with CPD for yourself and other members of your, in your school. If you want help signing up, the next stand is just over there to my right. If you want to get in touch with myself or Paul, if you've got any more questions, you want to have a look at our journey, please feel free to jot down our emails, take our Twitter handles, or you can just take a picture of that screen. And the last thing is to sign up to the Microsoft Educators community to redeem the certified MIE badge. You just need to take down that code and you can put it into the promotional code area on there in order to get your MIE badge. If you have any questions for us, we'll be at the side of the stage for a couple of minutes after this. And ultimately, thank you very much for listening. A round of applause, please, for Louise and Paul. Thank you so much.